Satanic oppression is real everywhere, in every nation of the earth. But more real is the victory won on the cross through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this you have access to the abundant life that brings deliverance from all satanic oppression, dominion, prosperity, and breakthrough. This is your moment of breakthrough, brought to you by Pastor Isaac and Dominion Life Christian Center, California. This is the moment of breakthrough broadcast. I believe God that the Lord will perfect that which concerns you through this broadcast today by the power of His Word in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, the title of this message is Be Strong in the Lord and in the Power of His Might. Uh, I have heard this before that many people give up in life when they are very close to their breakthrough. Many people surrender when they are almost at their breakthrough. I pray that that will not be your portion in the precious name of Jesus. And I believe that is why God is sending this word to you at this time. So that you cannot give up because your breakthrough is around the corner in the name of Jesus. It's also good for me to let you understand that uh, there is a, a, every challenge of life, every problem in life has a date to expire. As a child of the Most High God, problems, challenges of life are not designed to overcome you. They must expire. So, whatever you are going through, whatever pain, whatever breakthrough you desire, in whatever areas of life, it will expire. Your breakthrough will come in the precious name of Jesus. And I know that is why God is sending this word to you at this hour. Don't give up. Never give up. Your breakthrough is around the corner. Praise the Lord. Now, every pain or every negative, negative situations that believers go through is a pain to God. God does not enjoy seeing his children going, uh, going through affliction. So, uh, because there is no father that enjoys seeing his biological children in pain, the Bible tells me in First Peter chapter five and verse ten. But may the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and say to you, after you have suffered a while. That's what the Bible says. Uh, problems are not designed to kill you. They are not designed to end your life. They are not designed to end your hope. Even when you are challenged, the Bible says, after you have suffered a while, First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10, also in Psalms 30 and verse 5, it says, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. <laughs> there is joy in the morning for what you are going through. Uh, the Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him from them all. I, I, I'm just here to let you know that this case is not going to end like that. I don't know what you are going through. This is not the end of it. You are only challenged. You are coming out brighter than gold in the precious name of Jesus. The Bible says, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy is coming in the morning for you in the precious name of Jesus. Aren't you excited? I, I, anything that I see in God's word, I, I believe it. I, 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 I'm, I'm I, I believe it because, because that's just what it is. The Bible says, for the word of God is living and powerful. The, the word of God has life. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Now, so you are not going to end your life broken. You are not going to end your life battered. You are not going to end your life in sickness, afflicted, broken down, hopeless, in pain, in the precious name of Jesus. I just have a lot of confidence from what the Word of God is saying right now. 
and uh, I hope you receive it because I have received this on your behalf. My faith is joined to your faith. I believe it very strongly that you are coming out brighter than gold in the precious name of Jesus. So I I'm trying to tell you something in here. Situations that we go through in life are not designed to end our glorious destiny. The Bible says the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. So God's calling over your life, God's purpose over your life will outlast your challenges. God's, the plan of God, the purpose of God for your life will outla out outlive your challenges. So I just need to brace up and get yourself ready. In the precious name of Jesus, because you are about to rebound by God's power in the precious name of Jesus. Now, I said at the beginning, I said, when you are going through pain, God feels it and he doesn't like it. Now, how do I know? In Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 14, the Bible says, Sin then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. So when you are going through situations, when you are down, he sympathizes, he feels it. Praise the Lord. He, he, he feels it. He, 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 he doesn't like it. So this is to let you understand that uh, it's not going to last forever in the precious name of Jesus. So uh, uh, challenges of life are not there. They are not allowed in the lives of believers forever. They are only allowed for a moment. Afflictions are permitted, are not permitted to last too long or not to even hand somebody's life. Praise the Lord. So your challenge, your situation, uh, everything not of God in your life, all of the design in your life that is not God's design is about to come to a hand in the precious name of Jesus. But you need to understand this. You need to believe this. And I like to do this. The ticket to God's help is salvation. The ticket, the access, what gives you access to the help of the Lord is the salvation of your soul. You need to give your life to Christ. Uh, firstly, Jesus is going to come back again. Secondly, you know, he died for the whole world. He died for you. He died that you may have life and have it more abundantly. You have everything to gain by giving your life to Christ. I, I, I want to talk to you about this. You need to give your life to Christ. Jesus is going to come back again. You must give your life to Christ. Then, and even right now, salvation gives you access to every help that you need. So I'm going to pray a very simple prayer. And after the prayer, then we will, uh, after the prayer, you, you will have given your life to Christ. Then I'll show you one or two steps that you need to take in the Lord to enhance to 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 enhance your place in destiny so pray this prayer with me lord jesus thank you for dying for me thank you for shedding your blood on the cross i acknowledge you as the lord and the savior of my life i confess you as my lord from today Write my name in the book of life. I am born again. In Jesus' precious name. If you have prayed that prayer, that is all you take. You just confess him as the Lord and your Savior. You are saved and that is just what it is. In the precious name of Jesus. Let me show you one step that is very, very critical. That we need to take as believers. Because we need, we seek help from the Lord. All the time but let's pay attention to what the Bible is saying as a believer as a believer you must strive you must do everything to live peaceably with all men 
The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 12, Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. In verse 14, it says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by these many become defiled. Now, we, now in, in, in the Lord's Prayer, we pray this prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. But the Bible tells us that your heavenly Father will not forgive your trespasses if you don't forgive the trespasses of others. Now, as simple or insignificant as that appears, that may hinder some people's blessing. It may hinder uh, divine help or it may hinder the work of God in our lives. Let me say, pursue peace with all men. And the Bible calls it holiness. I say, without which no one will see the Lord. Praise the Lord. And in, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10, the Bible says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us go, do good to all, especially those who have their sort of faith. So we need to live peaceably with all men. So this is the time for, for, for us to look at people around us, people that we're not in good terms with, people that have wronged you. As a believer, uh, you must learn to forgive no matter what anybody has done to you. Find a place for forgiveness in your heart. Praise the Lord. Now, when, when we look at scriptures, in Mark chapter 9, Jesus says something here from verse 49. For everyone will be seasoned with fire, and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. So having peace with one another is having salt in your life. And you know, salt is needful in life. And then, so when we don't live in peace with people, we have lost our saltiness. That, that, that's what that means. Uh, uh, in, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13, it says, You are the salt of the heart, but if the salt loses its flavor. So we, as the salt of the heart, we can only lose our saltiness by not living in peace. But we say, so... Salt is no longer useful if, it's, if it loses its saltiness. How shall it be seasoned? Yeah, it is no longer good for anything. So I want to tell you, people of God, we need to embrace the total life of forgiveness. It doesn't matter what anybody has done. You can forgive. You can let go. Praise the Lord. You can let go. You can forgive. You can let go completely and completely and release them. Not just doing it. You know, God says the heart. God says your heart. No, I, I'm only trying to look at things that may hinder the visitation of God in your life. Because I want God to visit you. I believe God. That is the purpose of this broadcast. It is the moment. It's a moment of breakthrough, and uh, and God always giving conditions. And then one of the conditions I believe God is giving you this hour is a condition to live peaceably, to live without malice with people. In Romans chapter 12 from verse 18, the Bible says, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. So even when it is necessary to hit back, don't hit back. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. God can fight your battles better for you. He can defend you better than you can ever defend yourself. Praise the Lord. I I'm trying to look into 
a scriptural access that makes the strength of God. Don't forget the title of this message, Be Strong in the Lord and in the Power of His Mind. This is spiritual strength. It takes a lot of the strength of the Spirit and don't be offended in, in, in the, in the in, 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 when there is a, an obvious provocation. Praise the Lord. Uh, and you don't even make an issue into it. Because God is going to help you. I, I just believe God. I just know that God is going to help you in the precious name of Jesus. We just have to look at all those little, little things. And also, you must be determined to settle with God in absolute trust. God is not committed to those that don't trust Him. God is not committed. God's help or, or, or God's uh, visitation is limited when people don't trust Him. But when you trust Him all the way, God goes out all the way for you. Absolute faith equals absolute victory. Now, what do I mean by this? You can't have any alternative with God. Is it that God or is not Him? Praise the Lord. If you need the strength of God, you need the help of God through your situations, you're going to have to learn to trust Him absolutely. You're going to have to learn how to make Him only Him and nothing else. Praise the Lord. Now, in Psalms 27 and verse 10, the Bible says, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Now, God is the most reliable help. Man can leave you. They can forsake you. David says, when my father, even when they don't leave you, they have their own limitations. So your trust in God must be absolute. Praise the Lord. Absolute trust in God is absolute faith. And absolute faith will command a result because once you trust Him, your trust in Him commits God's integrity on your behalf. Let's see what the Bible also says in Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Who trusts in other man and who trusts in himself. So, because you are even limited to helping yourself to your own strength and ability. So, what can you do for yourself? The Bible says, whose act depart from the Lord? Because when your trust is in man, the more you put your trust in man, the more your heart departs from the Lord. The more you trust people, the more you trust men, you, you put your trust in men, the more your heart is departing from the Lord. The verse says, for it shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes. Shrub in the desert are small, small plants that are not rooted. That's... They are drying. They, 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 they can't survive. That is what it means. When you put your trust in the flesh, when you put your trust in men, it, 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 nothing lasts. Praise the Lord. He says, shall inhabit the patch places in the wilderness. Now, verse 7 says, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. For it shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spread out its root by the river. Now, when you look at this thing, everything that you and I need is in the Lord. Your trust in Him must be absolute. I, I believe one of the reasons why it is very difficult to, sometimes it takes time, or people don't see the hand of the Lord, is because we don't trust Him. We don't have faith, even when we think we do. I, I remember the story in, in the book of Acts when the when Peter was jailed and the Bible said and the church gathered together making prayer for his release and the church were praying the church were praying do you know it's possible for people to be praying and not have faith people can pray with no faith now the church were praying for Peter's release and 
somehow the angel of the Lord went in there and released Peter. We know the story. And Peter came to the church where they are gathered. Then he knocked on the door. Then there was a little girl, Rhoda. He went, she went by the door. And the Bible, the Bible says, in excitement, she didn't open the door. She ran back to the brethren. She said, oh, Peter is at the door. They said, it's not Peter. Now, listen. They were praying for Peter's release. One little girl had a knock on the door and came back and said, it is Peter. He said, it's not. They said, it's not him. Now, the, <laughs> that tells me they were praying, but they were not expecting him. They were praying, they were not expecting him. So prayer without expectation is no faith. Now, and when she insisted, they said you must be out of your mind. So it is very, very possible to be praying and you don't have faith. Praise the Lord. So people of God, you must expect, you must trust the Lord you must know that he won't let you go stranded. God cannot mismanage your life when you put your life is in him. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen many manifestations of God's faithfulness in my life, in our ministry, because our trust is absolute in him. He's the one doing everything. The one he won't do, let it remain undone. Everything he does is the right thing. The trust in God is absolute. And when you absolutely trust him, everyone is committed. That, that's just what it is. And that is the realm that things begin to happen in your life. Things begin to happen in your life. So when you trust him absolutely, it is the lifestyle of faith. And you just know God cannot mismanage my life. When you don't, uh, you, you, when your trust in him is not absolute, it's like you are praying to someone that you don't even trust. Now, God won't leave you stranded, people of God. God is faithful. God is very faithful. I pray that you're going to see the faithfulness of God in the precious name of Jesus. In every area that you desire Him, I agree with you in faith and I pray that you will soon see the hand of God in the name of Jesus. God will turn that situation around for your favor in the precious name of Jesus. Let me pray with you. Let, let me just pray with you right now. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I agree in faith with everyone on this broadcast. Lord, I pray that you will grant the desires of their hearts. Lord, I pray that they will be strengthened in faith to commit heavens on their behalf. Those that are sick in the body, I release the word of life for recovery over you in the precious name of Jesus. I rebuke the power of sickness and the power of infirmity. I pray for a tangible manifestation of God's power in your life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. People of God, that is all it takes. I want you to expect your miracle. I want you to expect your breakthrough, knowing that something took place. But don't forget, you must trust Him absolutely. You must keep your trust in Him. You must also know that your situation, your challenges, the, the, the problems that you have right now will expire. And I believe now is the time that they will expire in the precious name of Jesus. I will say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So your joy is coming now in the name of Jesus. As you embrace this word from the Lord, this exhortation, your joy is the next in line in Jesus' mighty name. This is the uh, moment of breakthrough. Uh, our television outreach from Dominion Life Christian Center. We are located on 2252 Camino Ramon in San Ramon, California. 
I invite you to come and fellowship with us. On Wednesdays, we meet at 7.30. 7.30 to 9 p.m. every Wednesday. And on Sunday, our services run from 11 a.m. Come and be blessed. Come and experience God's power in your life. There is help for you. There, you, 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 are, you are not out of help. There is help for you. There is help available unto you. It's not too late. No situation is too late for God to rescue in your life. And I believe that you, you are not watching me on this broadcast by accident. You have because God sets you up to reach out to you to help you in the precious name of Jesus. So you can give us a call. Give me a call. Send an email. Our addresses and contacts are on your television screen. And, I, and more than anything else, I'm expecting your testimony because I know something has taken place on your behalf. God bless you. Thank you for being there. I want to take this opportunity to get you acquainted with our church programs. I am Pastor Isaac Shegwabugo from Dominion Life Christian Center here in San Ramon, California. I want to invite you to come and be part of our church family. There is a need for everyone to have a church. And with no reservation, I recommend our church to you. In San Ramon, I minister every week from the church. Uh, our midweek service is at 7.30 p.m. every Wednesday. And on Sunday, our Dominion Celebration service is at 11 a.m. Two hour service. Come and be blessed and see what the Lord will do in your lives. Also, I want you, if you live in the Stockton or Tracy area, or you are family there, tell them our church is also in Stockton. Uh, in Stockton, our midway service runs on Thursday at 7 p.m. And on Sunday in Stockton is at 10 a.m. Uh, the man of God will minister there with the anointing of the Holy Ghost powerfully. So uh, get your families, get your friends, get them to attend. And, and give us a visit, give us a trial and see what the Lord is going to do in your life. I, I know that uh, your life will never remain the same. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, and of course, we run the uh, Ninth of Miracles here in Saramon. Every last Friday of the month is our Ninth of Miracles from 9 p.m. through midnight. It's the Ninth of Miracles where things happen. This is not about joining a church, this is about experiencing God's power. I look forward to seeing you there. God bless you.